this was incredibly well calculated. Today we're doing sort of an OB workshop at work, so I can expense food. I got the chicken bowl from Atis with extra feta cheese and the juice. I made a smoothie this morning and I forgot to wash this straight away and now it's like really hard to get it off the glass. I'll leave it here for now. The water looks disgusting. Turn it around. Good job. Today is Saturday and I went for a walk in the morning as you saw and I grabbed a pizza for lunch and then I adventured myself with writing some Python code for the first time in a long time. I used Python in the past quite a lot actually but it was more for like data analysis use cases which is stuff that I used to do more at Rolls Royce so I wanted to get back into it. I just installed Anaconda on my Mac so I have Python and all the libraries and then I installed PyCharm as well. Again, I haven't used PyCharm in such a long time. I usually use IntelliJ or VS Code, but yeah, never worked a lot with PyCharm. Also this week I kind of went back to using the Apple keyboard. I have this one. To be honest, I really like this keyboard, but it's just quite big. I prefer smaller ones like 65% and it has a cable which is not that nice and aesthetic. I don't know what I prefer. A mechanical or a non-mechanical keyboard. I like both. I think they're nice in their own way. They're just a bit different. I wanted to start coding some algorithms on the channel just for fun and that's why I'm installing Python. When I started learning to code uh, three years ago, this was the theme that I had on VS Code, Atom 1, <laughs> and it feels kind of nostalgic to me. I'm thinking of going with the uh, Atom 1 Dark Oh my god. I just spent the last two hours reading about algorithms and looking stuff up online. A few days ago I put up a question box on my Instagram and I asked you guys to challenge me to algorithms. One of the most requested algorithms was Dijkstra. So we're gonna kickstart this challenge with the Dijkstra algorithm. So Dijkstra is basically an algorithm to find the shortest path between nodes in a directed weighted graph. And it's actually used in real life for network routing. The example I'm drawing here is actually from another YouTube video. I will leave it linked down below. It explains the Dijkstra algorithm pretty well. I just thought that it went a bit fast at some point, so I'll try to explain as best as I can here. So Dijkstra is an algorithm that, given a certain starting node, it will tell you the shortest path to reach any of the other nodes in the graph. First of all, Dijkstra keeps track of the nodes that were already visited. And we can do this quite easily with a set, like in Python you have sets, so that's a good data structure to use here. For illustration purposes, I'm going to populate the set so we can just cross off the ones that we already visited. And then on the other hand, we also need to keep track of the distances that we're calculating. 
and this can be done very well with a hash map. So we can keep a hash map with the distances as we're computing them. So in the beginning, we are here on node A. In A, the distance is zero because that's the starting node and we've already visited A, so we can cross it off. From A, we have two edges, one with a weight of four that goes to B and one with a weight of two that goes to C. And because we want to find the shortest path, we will always go for the lowest weight. So we would go from here to node C next. But before we do that, we need to update our distance hash map with the distances that we just saw. So we know that from A to B, there's a path which can be done with a weight of four. And from A to C, there's a path that can be done with a weight of two. And now we travel to C. So now we visited C, we can cross it off. And in C, we can go to B with a weight of one, we can go to D with a weight of four, or to E with a weight of five. So it seems like the shortest path to take here is to go from C to B, and this would have a distance of three, which would be two to go from A to C, plus one to go from C to B. So we found a path where we can travel to B that costs us three instead of four. So we can actually update our distance table with 2 plus 1 equals 3. So from C we can also go to D and that would be 4 plus the 2 that we spent from going from A to C. So D has a distance of 2 plus 4 oops, equals 6 and E would have a distance of 2 plus 5 equals 7. And now we travel to B. Now we are in B, we can cross B off. At B we can go back to C and it's a weight of 3. We can go to D with a weight of 2 or we can go to E with a weight of 3. We already visited C so we're not interested in going back. So we want to go to D or E. And because the path is shorter for D, we're going to go to D. And the distance is 2 plus 1 plus 2, which is 5. And 5 is lower than 6. So we should update our distance hash map because we found a shorter path. 2 plus 1 plus 2, which is 5. Sorry for the bad space optimization there. However, we could also go to E. And E would be 2 plus 1 plus 3, which is 6. And 6 is lower than 7, so we should also update this distance. And we would repeat this process until we visit all the nodes in the graph. And this is what we would return at the end, the distance hash map with all of the distances between the nodes. And these are the shortest distances between A and each of the other nodes. Perhaps I should create a service that sends everyone an email a day with an algorithm explained and like the solution coded up in Python, which brings me to the sponsor of this portion of the video, Mailgun. Mailgun is a platform for email messages. I explored the platform and I found it very user-friendly and I also have a very comprehensive API, which I think is always very useful when you want to scale things up. I thought of creating a newsletter or like an email service, for example, the one with the algorithms. And if I did this and it became successful and it grew a lot, this is definitely the type of service that I would look for to manage it. On Mailgun, you can send and track messages, prevent fake signups and remove invalid email addresses. And it also finds the ideal time to send emails with their send time optimization feature. And this is really good because it optimizes engagement and it increases your conversion rates. Some of Mailgun's customers are Wikipedia, Lyft, Microsoft and DHL. And they are overall just an exceptional service for email. Big thank you to Mailgun for sponsoring this portion of the video. You can try Mailgun today by using my link mailgun.com slash Jackie. I hope you find the service useful if you decide to sign up. And as always, I really appreciate your support on my channel. Okay, so let's code this up now. So I'm going to create a function dijkstra, takes in two inputs, a graph and a starting node. So I'm going to create visited nodes as a set and distances as a hash map. And I can already say that the starting node is zero. 
and now we need uh, the priority queue. And we can do this as a list of tuples. Tuples? Is that how you say it? Uh, and we can already give it zero and the start note. And now we need to loop through the nodes in the graph. So basically we're gonna loop through the priority queue. So while the priority queue is not empty. So first of all, we need to get the node that we wanna look at. And for this, we can use, uh, there's a heap data structure in Python. I need to import it. Import, so heap dot, I think it's heap pop. Yep, arguments, pop the smallest item of the heap maintaining the heap invariant. Yeah, so this is what we want, but we need to feed in our priority queue here. And here, so actually it will return not just the node, but also the weight. So I need to uh, receive both of these. And now we're gonna check whether the node has been visited or not. So if node not in visited nodes. So for neighbor distance in graph at a certain node, what is this complaining about? Oh, actually, I think I need to call items here. And now we need to compute the distance. So new distance equals distances at node. Actually, no, this could throw an exception. What we need to do is first check if the neighbor is not in the distance hash map and then put it in. And we need to check if the distance uh, from the neighbor plus the distance that we already walked is smaller than the distance that we have in the hash map. Does this make sense? The distance plus the distance index at the node, which is what we have in the hash map. Yep. Yeah. And then what we also need to do is add this neighbor to the priority queue. And we need to mark the node as visited as soon as we see them. So here we can do visited nodes.add node. And in the end, we return our distances array. Does this make sense? I hope so. Okay, so I created this graph here. It's the one from the example. And 0, 3, 2, 5, 6. We got the same result. Yay! sun is shining, but it's super cold outside. So I'm gonna get dressed. Just changed into some workout clothes and now we're gonna work out. As much as I would rather prefer to keep reading my book. I'm still a little bit sick from last week and I went to the gym and it was super cold and I don't want to work out in the cold because I was sick last week so I'm gonna work out from home instead.
I can't put this in the video. <coughs>